Да, ребят, привет, привет. Виталик, может, присядешь сюда? А, я думаю, уже... Да, да начинается... но сейчас, прежде чем переключиться на английский, у меня одно маленькое объявление в начале, что... Ребят, вот тут, тут QR-код, телеграммовский чатик. Да, сейчас давайте открывайте телефончик, добавляйтесь. Вопросы пишите, просто туда. Я приветствую наших онлайн-участников, то же самое, ребят. У вас уже все есть by design, ссылочка на чатик, чатик также рядом с плеером. Сдаем вопросы там э, и с хэштегом question желательно, чтобы мы их посмотрели. Я их буду внимательно смотреть и в конце докладика <coughs> буду их задавать. Можете писать на английском и предпочтительно на английском, потому что доклад будет на английском. Если не, будет, я, ду я думаю, не важно особо. Если будете писать на русском, мне будет трудно переводить, потому что я ни черта не понимаю. Так ты говори на русском, я что-нибудь отвечу на да. русском тоже. This is, this is a data structure we are talking about. Да, так и будет. Хорошо. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hydra Congress 2022. And our dear speaker today is Vitaly Aksyonov. And the talk is about binary research trees. In yeah. the context of Hydra Conference, so uh, probably you have some ideas uh, what uh, concurrence is about. And everybody who is involved to the algorithms and data structures Probably has some ideas about binary search trees, correct? Okay, yes, <laughs> correct. Not everybody, by the yeah. way. So, and this talk is about the mix of the first and the second, the concurrency applying to the binary search trees. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on the stage Mr. Dr. Dr. Yeah. Vitaly Aksolov. Okay, thank you very much, Alexei. So, uh, the talk will be a little, like, It should be a little bit easy, I think, so that's why I'm talking this in English, so like that the talk will become a little bit harder for you. Um, there is not much that I really will be talking, like I will cover at least, like I remind you there are algorithmic basics of binary search trees and I will explain at least some ideas on how to make them concurrent. Uh, however, I expect you to know what is log-free, log-based is, I hope that you know that. So, uh, oh, okay, I have the slide, okay, fine. So, um, there are three supported operations of sets in concurrency. So there is insert operation where you insert a key and it returns true if there is nothing there and it returns false if there is already key there. Uh, there are delete operation and contain separation. So like they're, they're quite similar to the insert. So like the, here is their Uh, how the set data structure looks like. So we will try to implement this using binary search tree. This set because like the binary search tree gives you uh, logarithmic complexity. As everybody knows, I think everybody knows about balanced trees. So like ideally they will give logarithmic time. Uh, plus there is a very interesting cooperation like range LR which either returns the, all the keys in the Uh, range between L and R, and uh, or either some range query uh, where you want to, like in the databases, when you want to count some number of keys that are lies in some in some place. For example, the timestamp: how many operations are done in between these 10 minutes? And uh, this is exactly about that. Uh, the range query is out of scope of this talk. Um, It is very large area which is currently going on. Yeah. So and and I will not cover it. This this will go for another talk probably sometime. So this is kind of introductory talk to concurrent binary search trees. So uh, before going inside of it, I want to remind you the types of binary search trees. There are three types. There are external binary search trees, is that all their elements are stored in the leaves, while there, there is only routing information between. So you have a tree there, and everything here is just the routing information where you go to the left to the right, and the real set is uh, at the bottom. 
So this is, as far as I remember, I think this is how B3 really works. So there are like difference between B3 and B plus tree. So B3 contains everything in the leaves, while B plus tree contains everything everywhere. So this is kind of internal, internal binary search trees where the keys are, I'm not sure, like I'm always confused in that. Uh, there is like difference in that. And there is an additional type that you are probably not aware of, are parti partially external binary search trees. Uh, I will like introduce them right now. So I will, I will try to go with bi partial external binary search, search tree. I will explain a little bit of logic that is going up why I present this tree first. Uh, the problem is that the bi concurrent binary search trees were invented not long time ago. So the first paper on concurrent binary search trees, like with the reasonable implementation, was provided in only in 2010. So it's, it's just 12 years ago, as you can see. So when I was starting doing that, uh, this was quite a hot topic already. Uh, what, what is partial external binary search tree? So this is like normal binary search tree. And you can see on the picture, there are uh, six keys there. So one, two, four, five, six, and eight. This is pure binary search tree. You're going to the left. You get less, uh, less than the key in the vertex. And when you go to the right, the keys are larger. And we have two types of nodes, data and routing. And the reason invariant for routing nodes is that it always should have two children. So the, the, this is a little bit helping because, for example, if, so you can see on the slide there that four is the routing, so these are gray nodes, so, uh, and everything else is data. And in the set, you contain only one, two, five, six, eight. Four is out of the set. So like it's not the logical representation of the set, and four doesn't lie there. But uh, the reason uh, helping in this data structure is that, for example, if you want to insert four, you will just go to the node with four, and you change it from routing to data. So you kind of insert the node, uh, not inserting the new node. Insert the key, but not inserting the new node. Uh, why we need the invariant that routing is a routing node has two children. This is pretty important because otherwise we will lose all the guarantees of the tree. For example, uh, you can you can represent a chain, a large chain where where you have routing, 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 and the data only at the bottom. So the tree is really contains two elements, but you have to pass all this large path to the to down to the corresponding key. So that is why routing has two children. So we can have some at least some reasonable information that uh, the number of leaves, uh, the, uh, the number of inner nodes is not much bigger than the number of leaves. OK, so how the traversal works like uh, in partial external binary search tree, so we just Simply, we start the search from the root, and we want to maintain three pointers. The node itself, uh, the parent, and the grandparent. I will explain a little bit later why we need three of them. But for right, right now, like I, I will claim you that we need three. So we just go, we check if the key is not current key, and we go to the left, then the par grandparent, the parent becomes grandparent, the current node becomes previous node, and the right child becomes the current. So and so on. So like th this is pretty much the standard binary search tree where you go to the corresponding path. Okay, so let me introduce how partial external binary search tree works because this is quite important for the concurrent implementation. So you can see there is a different version of insertion there. Either the first case, we want to insert three and we haven't found the key there. So we just create a new node and connect it to the parent. In the case that we have a node with the same key, so we have insert two and we have the key two, we just change this from routing to data, and that's all. You can kind of the node becomes from gray to white. 
The remove is a little bit more complicated, so there are not two cases, there are four cases. So the first case, there is a node which is not a leaf. Then we just set, for, uh, and it has two children. Then we just say to routing, and that's it. Uh, in the second case, we want to delete a node with one child. We cannot say that it is routing because we maintain the invariant that the routing node has two children. So instead of uh, marking the node as routing, we just reroute the child of the parent. So this is exactly where you need parent. Right now, you will see why you need grandparent. So, uh, and to other cases where you remove leaves. So at first one, it is a leaf with the data parent, so nothing very interesting happens. You just replace three with null as the child. And when you remove a leaf with the routing parent, you can't leave uh, the routing parent there because it will have one child. So you have to remove the whole two nodes at the same time. So this is exactly why you need the grandparent because where it doesn't work. Where it is? Ah, it's it's not there. It's not the posture. Yeah. So um, you can see that three was the target key. Two is its parent, and six is its grandparent. So we just we just need three, three of these links to remove it from partial external binary search tree. So um, the first attempt that you can use the partial external binary search tree is that uh, the easiest way to write it is using locks. And of course, to have a uh, deleted Boolean flag in each node to mark logically deleted and like, and then finally delete it as physically. So instead of status where was data and routing, we have additional deleted mark that uh, the node is really is going to be deleted soon. So this is standard trick for concurrent data structures where you mark the node to be deleted. Okay, so there are two policies of taking the locks. Either you take the lock on the whole node where you lock uh, the status, the deleted flag, uh, the children. So these are four, four, four fields. Or either you split all this separation on different locks. So you have the lock for the status with deleted, you have the lock on the left children, and you have the lock on the right children. One could think that which policy is better. On one hand, if the lock is pretty complicated, then it is better not to take, not to have four different lock, three different locks. But if the lock is quite fast, then you could have uh, for each field its own lock. So the, um, and also, so yeah. So the, which policy is better depends on what lock you are using. But I t like there. Um, like experiments really show that it is better to have different locks, especially if there are just spin locks, then it is better to use different locks there. Also, I have to remind uh, about the right way to lock, because otherwise you will get to the deadlock. We don't want to do that. So there is a right way to lock from the top to the bottom. So we have grandparent, parent, child, no, I mean our node, and we should lock from the top, right? Grandparent, parent, and child. And if something is not correct when you're locking, you just throw away and start again. Um, so yeah, this is exactly how the lock procedure looks like. Uh, we do conditional locking. So this is, this is what looks like conditional locking. We have a checking procedure that that everything is fine. For example, the node is still a leaf, or the status is routing, or it definitely has two children, or it has one children, because we have like four cases for remove and two different cases for insert. So we just check at the beginning, then we lock the lock, and we check again. And if something is not correct, then we restart the operation. So um, it appears that this additional check even that it is not kind of kind of you think that it's not necessary because you take a lock and then check. 
it appears that it is much better to check twice because you will never take if something has really changed that you will never take a lock and if everything hasn't changed then you still have this in cache all this information so the second check is almost free for you and you do the check anyway so it appears that using this technique you can do the concurrency optimal binary search tree this is a little bit out of scope of my talk but um, you can prove that uh, doing their data binary search tree like that, it will be optimal in some theoretical sense. Yeah, because I wanted to mention myself there, because this is my paper, of course. Okay, uh, so um, let's do this with the first try. So we have a node and we want to insert three. So we lock the state and check that it is not deleted. Then we check that the right edge is still null. So we lock the right edge and check the null. And then you insert three. So that's it. Now, like with insert, there is no a lot of problem because there are just two cases and they're quite simple. So for the routing, you just lock, check the state, and change the state to the right. Uh, it becomes a little bit complicated with uh, the removal. So this is the hardest removal that we have, where we remove the leaf with the routing parent. So we take the grandparent and lock the left child and check that it still, uh, still links to the parent or to the pref. Okay, then we lock the state, and ch uh, state of the pref and check that it is routing and it is not yet deleted logically. Because like, wh wh why we have this not logically deleted? Because there is a garbage collector or some other memory reclamation technique where it will take you out, w which is not instant, so you possibly can be there at that node. So you have to understand whether it was deleted and unlinked or not. Then we lock the left child and check the link. We lock the right child. Uh, we check that it still points to the current, and finally you lock uh, the current node and check that it is leaf. Because if it is not the leaf, then this is a, a different case, which we already looked on the remove operations. So we just um, stop there, and, and afterwards we can make the change. Only after when we take so many locks. Okay. What about the performance? That's, that would be an interesting question uh, because uh, this tree ha has not rebalancing phase there. So it, at the worst case, it, it, it could be a vine, like where you have like kind of chain with, with the leaves attached to there. I mean, in the, in the, on, the, on the random uh, requests, it will be quite balanced. So if you if you pick the keys unif at uniform and you want like if you know that your workload is uniform, where you take the keys with uh, with the addition uh, equal probability, then the tree will be a little bit balanced. So you don't have to think about that, and it will work well. But uh, if you have like I don't know zip and distribution, for example, you insert keys in the node one by one, starting from the smallest to the largest, or from the largest to the smallest. Uh, this is not good, of course, because you will have exactly this wine. Uh, and so we should add rebalancing there. So I want to remind you about the rebalancing of AVL, because I will be using it a little bit later. But it can be rebalancing of red black trees of splay. Tr oh no, splay tree doesn't really work there because the splay. Uh, if you remember the splay tree, it it moves the element to the top, always, and it's a little bit uh, not convenient for the concurrent schemes because you have to lock everything on the path there because you move it to to the top. Um, while here uh, it is a little bit local. The AVL rotations are local. So, for example, here you have the, uh, no, like the tree with the height h. I want to remind you that uh, avial tree is the tree where you have, uh, the, like you have the root and the height of the subtrees differs not more than by one. So this is kind of approximate balancing, but it, it gives you logarithmic n. Uh, it's not perfectly balanced, but it gives you logarithmic n asymptotic complexity. So the depth 
of each uh, like a rebalanced tree will be logarithmic n. So as you can see, we, we just have this situation where we inserted elements and there is some child of b and uh, oh, sorry, sorry, we, remo we remove from the right, so we remove uh, from s and this becomes of the height h minus 3 and on the left it is on the height h minus 1, so we have to rebalance it. So this is how rotation works, so we just move it a little bit and connect them in the right order and then you go back to the top. So you just like rotate a little bit and move on. So the relaxed of AVL balancing was presented in like uh, I don't even know how to how to tell this in the technical report uh, of some French students in 1998. Nobody knows how to do concurrent binary search trees, but they said that you can do their relaxed AVL balancing. So what is the idea behind that? You just uh, you store the heights. In the nodes, so why, why is this re relax, relaxed, right? So you store the approximate heights of the nodes, and you store the heights of the left child and the right child, and then if you see their difference, then you rotate it. Even that, the height can be outdated, really. Uh, the, the trick is the following, that when all the threads have finished their operations, the tree will be balanced afterwards. So, you will go from the bottom, like the latest thread that comes from the bottom to the top, it will calculate all the heights correctly because it has nothing, nothing going on lower. So it goes from the bottom and so on and it r rotates c correctly. So there are other two rebalancing strategies that are quite useful in, in general. Uh, that's very interesting that, like, at some point I will be talking only about papers of Trevor Brown because he has done an incredible work in this part. So there is, like, the balancing strategy uh, top-down. It appears that binary search tree can be implemented in top-down uh, rotation manner, which is chromatic trees, so it is some version of red-black trees, but instead of having eight cases, it has 16 different cases for the rotations. And either you rebuild the whole subtree from scratch. So you just come to the nodes, see that how many operations were in this subtree. And if there are a lot of operations in this subtree happen, so for example, the size of the tree, then we can uh, rebuild the whole, the whole tree. From there, and this is kind of uh, easy, easy, much easier way to do than top down or bottom up or anything like it can be done. Uh, like this, um, this approach was presented uh, by Trevor Brown in concurrent IST. This is not exactly the binary search trees, it is interpolation search tree, but the idea of the re rebuilding from scratch is taken from there. So we have partial, we want to do partial external binary search trees, okay? So in the first attempt was done, as I already told, in 2010. But it is really complicated. Uh, how operation get works, or like traverse, or like contains, it works in hand-over-hand -hand locking manner, but without locks. Uh, up to, so yeah, I, I mean, I said hand-over-hand -hand locking, but optimistically. So it is not exactly taking the locks. It is just we we traverse uh, to the uh, to the uh, target key. And we traverse there, okay. And um, you know that some, like you you have two nodes, and you know that something can change. Like there, there can be rotation, or there is a removal, or something like that, and everything is changing. Uh, the idea is that let's read these two nodes, check it, uh, then consider it to each child we are going down, and then we check it again after what we, we want something to change. You check it again, and then if everything's fine, you go recursively to the children. So if, if something has changed, then you go not to the, not, then you retry not the whole operation, but you just take the recursion and go back on one level. 
very just. Um, yeah, so um, you, you check the version there that nothing has changed, and like the deletions and rotations change there. Uh, uh, change. Uh, their ver version. Also, the rotations do a very tricky thing. They uh, change the bit, bit mask in each node, like which is the part of their version. I will explain right now why, why there is a special bit mask there. So yeah, the problem with the previous tree is that operation is not rate free, but luckily it is lock free. Oh, like people are going out of their auditorium. Just yeah, it seems it seems I, I'm giving an interesting talk. Here, um, the problem is why it is not weight free, and you have to do this hand over hand locking manner. It is the, this rotation. So, for example, you are searching for A, and you come to the node C, and then someone made a rotation there, and you were s sitting it at the node C. You can see the problem, right? Because there is a contains that is waiting on the node C, but is rotated, and A is, is no longer the left child. So, so you, you cannot find A anywhere. So this is exactly, but, but this happens not for the whole rotations. For some rotations, uh, for example, if, um, if we were, for example, in a and we go to the left, like, or, or yeah, if, if, you, if you are from the C and you, try to run a contains that searches for something here, and then you rotate, you can continue from C, because nothing really changed for it. You can go to the right child. And here you use a bit mask that, that tells you what exactly rotation had been done there. So uh, either, either, either the large rotation or the small rotation, or uh, the rotation to the left, the rotation to the right, and then you kind of Instead of uh, going back by the recursion, you just continue the operation from there. And that is why it is really tricky. I don't think that this is the real uh, boost of their performance, but like it is as it is. OK. Now I'm going, like this is the first attempt for their partial external binary search tree. It is even like their paper is right, a practical concurrent binary search tree. So this is exactly the first binary search tree that was done for a long time, and it was in 2010. Another uh, binary search tree that I really need to mention is convention-friendly binary search tree. Uh, but it makes get operation or contains operation much easier. It resolved this issue with the rotations and etc. So, for example, if you make a rotation, you just do the following trick. You just well, you want to do a rotation of these guys, okay? So instead, if you you create three nodes in the right order, and then just relink it, relink it. So your 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 get operation, even even that something has changed, your get operation is here or here, and it can continue correctly downwards. So like get 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 works much better in this case. You don't have to deal with like some um, version, version something like that. So what else, what propose, so yeah, these two trees, these two trees were written in Java, so we don't care about memory reclamation yet, which is, which is, will be, which is, which is a large problem for everyone who write, writing in C. Is there everybody like from the C++ conference? Okay, there are like, <laughs> Five people, <laughs> so yeah, you have prob problems with the choice of your language. So if you want to do concurrency, please consider to switch. <laughs> I, I'm joking. You can do, of course, whatever you want, but I highly suggest to do that. Um, yeah, I, I will explain a little bit how we deal with memory management in in C++. If if I have time, uh, there there is a way. There are like data structures that are implemented in C++, of course. So uh, what else was proposed there, in that paper? Why why it is contention friendly? The idea is that like when you do rotations and you want to maintain their like removal, like the deletion and insertions are are a little bit complicated, right? So let let this be only one thread who does this. 
who maintains the routing invariant and who uh, may have AVL rotations. So not the whole threads, like they insert something and then go back to rotate. No, you just insert and forget. There is like another thread that is may, uh, restructured daemon that goes there and restructure everything. So this division simplifies the development, of course. And this is kind of, uh, let me go straight to the end. This is the best binary search thing written in Java. So it's 2013. That's a long time ago. Uh, about internal binary search thing. OK. Like, this is exactly where the partial external binary search tree stopped evolving a little bit. And then let us consider other techniques and other binary search trees. So let us consider internal binary search trees. So I will give you the problem there. So insertion is simple. You just go down and insert as a, as a leaf. So there, there is no problem. But removal are much more complicated. Because re how the removal is done, You're, you want to remove the node 3. And how this works, typically we find the next element in the tree with their next value, or the next key uh, by the value. And you replace this node, you replace 3 with this next, uh, with this next value. So you just set it to 7, and there is like some change for the 12. So you see we move 7 to the 3, uh, to the three and we remove 7 from the, bot from the bottom. Of course, um, there is a lot of problems with this uh, internal binary search tree. So you want to traverse to the target key. It doesn't work because keys can bubble up right now. Because like this, uh, it can be some next child which will be moved there. So this is not very good. The naive approach is to took, take the lock on the whole this path. So like on everything here, we take the lock. Which is obviously not really what we want because this is a little uh, hard operation to do. And it is very coarse grained. And also, we have to make hand-over-hand -hand locking to traverse there. So this is uh, inefficient, slow and inefficient. And plus, we have to do rebalancing in some way. This is not only, not only the search operation and insertion and deletion, but we want the balance string. So there is an interesting idea on how to do that. This was done in 2014 by Dana Draxler. And others, like practically concurrent binary search trees via logical ordering. This is again written in Java. Uh, the idea is that we have the problem of finding the next key in the tree to replace our node. How we can make next in all of one. I think everybody like, uh, has written in their life something like that, where you add the linked list over all the keys in this tree. So you just, you just kind of insert the order. So you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and, and so on. So this is uh, why, why doubly linked list, I will explain a little bit later. We really need in both sides, like in next and in pref. Yeah, at this time you get wait free traverse. You just, you just go by the tree in the normal traversing manner, just go to the left, to the right, and then you get to the leaf. You just decide, OK, I haven't found anything. Like, I haven't found my key. But I know that all the keys align in their doubly linked list. So I can go either to the left or either to the right. This depends how much you made an error. You either go to the uh, to the leaf, which is larger or which is smaller. And you just, um, when, when you go to the, to the leaf, you just understand where to go, to the left or to the right. OK, this is also enough for remove and insert and for rotations. You can just, you, the only problem with that is that you just have to take locks in two dimensions. You just have to take locks in the tree, and you have to take locks in this double link list on the previous and next, so nobody can insert anything while you are doing that. And of course, it is, it is a little bit inefficient, so it's like twice 
slower, it becomes twice slower, but at the same time you have an improvement because internal binary search trees are much, they're not much, they're faster than partial external and of course faster than external because everything is stored uh, everywhere and it is kind of three, three over two times faster. There is an interesting story about that paper is that uh, when Trevor Brown gave his student to re-implement this algorithm, uh, they found out in 2019 that there is an error and it is not linearizable. <laughs> yeah, so like, so don't believe the papers written by scientists, never. They're, they're, they lie. Okay, what about log-free binary search trees? Everything that we talked before are log-based approaches. So let us talk a little bit about log-free. Uh, of course, it seems that external, oh, sorry, internal and partially external binary search trees are complicated. We already seen there are like lots of cases. So instead of that, we can use external trees. So external trees are much easier to implement. They don't have any cases at all. So for example, here, you have the routing node. This is the square root one, uh, squ oh, sorry, squ squared one. And there is a circle with the leaf, or like, yeah, with the leaf because everything is stored in the leaf. So when you insert an element, you just go downwards, and then you create a special new routing node there, uh, for example, eight, and you link six to that. So when you go to this routing node, uh, you want to search for six, then you go to the left. If you search for eight, you go to the right. The deletion is also simple. So um, it is a leaf to start with. And we want to remove six from there. And we remove the node and its parent. And that's it. And its routing parent and nothing else. So this, this, is, this is pretty simple. Uh, the good question why nobody did practically optimal, like practical external binary search tree, that's the good question. I don't have an answer for that. That's how it is historically was. So about log free, like right now I will be a little bit on their, I will be touching their ideas but not giving their large details about that. I give you the links to the paper. So. The first attempt was done on 2010. As far as I remember, either, either their practical binary search tree and this one was at the same conference, or they like one on POTSI and one in DISC in the difference of half a year. So like that's, so like 2009 is the, the time when they start. And the idea was to standard log free is to use descriptors. So this is the standard. Uh, log free idea. So it was implemented, I think, in 2006 on queues and uh, linked lists, but it was never applied before to binary search trees. So, and when you access the node, you, uh, if there is nothing that, you just store the descriptor there and make a change. Either otherwise, you just find the descriptor there and you help this separation to finish. Uh, the problem is that it becomes more complicated with their descriptors. So as you can see, there is like, uh, this is the diagram taken from the paper. So you have clean note at the start, and then you want, want to, make, uh, to make a removal, then you put a flag there, the, then uh, kind of you, you, you put a descriptor, you put a delete descriptor in it, then I put a delete descriptor on the child, and then I make the change. So, and then when, when another, another operation just got, for example, here, like it sees, okay, I have the descriptor in child, so I should help the operation and make the, the change there. The, sa the same happens with insert. Insert is a little bit easier because you don't have to store the grandparent. Because like for, for removal, you have to link the child to the, uh, to the grandparent. Okay. Uh, another attempt was done in already 2014 by Natariani Mittal, but this is already the time for C++ to shine. Uh, like the previous version, like the previous attempt was written in Java. But um, yeah, 
but this version cannot be done in Java. What is the problem? There are too much operations with descriptors. So for delete operation, you create two descriptors. Or for any other, for insert, you create one descriptor. But it's still the problem of the memory management because you have, like, your memory allocation should be concurrent, and of course, it's not ideal. So, like, this is dot garbage collector, and the Java allocation is. They are good, but they're, they're not brilliant. Uh, there are, yeah, and it was coarse grained on the vertices because you set their uh, descriptor to the vertex. Uh, while we already talked about that, you could put descript like you could take the locks separately for each part of the node, so for the children and for the state. Well, here the descriptor freezes the whole node. So the idea of Natarayan and Mittal was to represent descriptors as two Boolean flags in the reference to children. So this cannot be done in Java. This is purely C++. So you have, the, so you have a node, you have reference to children. Like, and because uh, there is 32 bit, you never will have so much. Uh, yeah, it's even 64 bit, right, nowadays. Uh, you can take two bits out of there and Everybody will be fine with that. So uh, you just store them like wh when you want to go to the child, you just store the bits and you get the right reference. So uh, the problem with that paper also is that it doesn't have memory management because memory management hasn't been started to work on in 2015. So uh, as far as I remember, these guys are oh, probably not, probably I'm mistaken. Like, I don't rem remember right now. Like, there are two options. Either, either they do without uh, memory allocation at all, memory management, or they use hazard pointers. If someone has worked with hazard pointers, that they know that this is pain. This is a large pain uh, to do, unfortunately. OK, this is, this is fine. This is almost fine. But the problem is that um, these two algorithms are not balanced. We don't have balance in there. The, mo the ultimate approach on how we can do the balancing in the log-free manner is to add custom operations with descriptors. So we lock the node and its, ch its child and everything that we need for the rotation, not, not taking the log. We just put the descriptors there and make a custom Operation, custom operation. It is compare and swap. Uh, there, it is it compare and swaps like kind of the several elements, but it is quite costly. For example, the first version of the coroutines. If you uh, watched the talk by Roman Ilizarov from the fir from our first summer school, he explained exactly like that in the application to coroutines, how they did this. OK, so there are two approaches, again, here with uh, balanced binary research trees. Like there is an, uh, one approach um, yeah, uh, to do the best, um, to get the best performance. Uh, the first, like these both papers are Trevor Brown, so I, think I don't have to care about that. So a general technique for, for non-blocking trees, it was based on external chromatic tree, but they introduced their uh, LLX and SCX. So, uh, whom knows what is LLSC is in the audience? There is only one person who knows what LLNCS is. Okay, uh, SC, sorry. Uh, uh, I, I thought that I didn't have to explain it, but like, uh, let me give a brief uh, intuition what LL and SC works. Uh, it is, it is named lot linked story conditional. What is that in in CAS in CASN, You you kind of you have you have n and 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 parts of memories which you want to compare and swap at the same time, and that's it. The lot linked uh, or for a compare and for for simple compare and swap. So you have the register. You just check that the value there is expected, and you replace it with the 
uh, require it. LLSC works a little bit different. It loads the value from it, and then uh, this is one operation you make load linked. So you just read from this cell, and then you can call story conditional. What does it mean, story conditional? It means that if nobody has changed this cell at all, I can write it there. So load link just reads, SC just writes, but it works only if no nothing has happened to the cell. Otherwise, it aborts. So this is, uh, um, I I'm quite surprised that uh, in the audience, a small number of people know that. This is the type of their concurrency in ARM processors. So in x86, you have compare and swap. In ARM, you have load link story conditional. So we are now going to the era of ARMs, I think. So like, I guess you should know that uh, a little bit. So the idea of this LLX and this CX uh, was that this is multi-register load link and story conditional. And that's it. So like they, they exp uh, Trevor explained how they work. Uh, and an additional very important thing is that he explained how to work with that with the low memory overhead. That's, that's very important issue. And it was done in C++. So yeah, there are some complicated, complicated algorithms that are written on C++. And of course, there is another approach for the rebuilding. Is there a collaborative rebuild after the number of operations? So if you have a subtree and you have a lot of operations that, that already worked on this subtree, you just kind of you say, you say everybody who is going there, OK, guys, I'm restructuring the whole subtree. Please help me. And then ki kind of concurrently and like kind of in parallel even. And then they in parallel rebuild this subtree and then replace it with their compare and swap. Okay, so this is about log-free binary search trees. Uh, about weight-free, like this is their hardest, hardest progress guarantee, weight-free. And there are some trees, but they are not implemented. Like there, I, I left the paper. This is in 2013, not Ryan. It is top-down red-black tree. So it's already complicated, so kind of chromatic tree. And uh, the idea is that there is a window that is moving down for each operation. And since the height of the tree is, is bounded, we just can help there all the windows to which. So, so we have window, 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 window. And for example, this window goes to the second window, it sees that the second window can't proceed because there is the third window, and going down and help their lowest, lowest window to proceed. So uh, a little bit of performance overview. So you know that uh, like there is different performance overview for Java and C++, of course. Um, the, uh, the first question, why not skip list? Because we have this implemented in Java, right? Already, Java concurrent skip list. The problem is that it works uh, two or three times slower than binary search trees. That's the main problem of skip list. And you have, in, except for that, you just get the problem with memory, because the skip list uses much more memory than binary search trees. So kind of your skip list is losing uh, by both sides, but it was invented in in 92, I think, 1992 or 1991 by Puch, Puch, Vinnie. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, we, we forget about skip list for our overview. And what what is only in Java. In Java, we can't have the tricks with descriptors, where, where we can take the flags out of the references. And none of the trees which were presented after when I finished with external binary search trees on Java, no. There are no. There are no exactly because if, if the problem is the following. When in C++ you have, you take some bits from the 
from the reference, you lose nothing because you just read it and you're done. And you can take the, like a little bit work with this reference, like throw away the first two bits and reference to the right child. In Java, you cannot do that. You have to create a special descriptor for that. And when you create a special descriptor for that, you have you get additional indirection, which slows down like by a lot. So you can't take their uh, their idea of Natarayan and Mittal into the Java because simply it will not work as f as fast as you want it to be. So with C++ without rebalancing, the best uh, tree is by Natarayan exactly. Uh, it's not balanced, but it's uh, it's still pretty good. About um, and an additional thought that I want to tell is that. Uh, right now, binary search trees are not the best data structures that ha that are on market. There are like you, you can see, right? So this is 2020 and this 2022. So these are pretty recent papers, also by Trevor Brown, by the way. Um, so the first one is uh, store any types of keys, and it is A B trees. So it is kind of the version of B trees. Uh, we, which, is, which is a little bit relaxed, and you can use uh, the LLX S6 there, and you have not more overhead there, so this is pretty good to use there. And the second one is if you want to store integers, please use uh, double, like uh, interpolation search tree. Uh, yeah, if you want to see some pictures and comparisons for the implementation in C++, there is uh, an overview by Arbel Ariv, and you could guess her co-author. Um, they present their overview of different concurrent binary search trees in C++. Yeah, about memory management, uh, they use epoch-based memory management, which is the simplest one for the memory management, if you want to remind, remember their, how memory management works, I would like to share you with, uh, like to link to you to their talk by R.S. Petrank on the Summer School 2017. Well, if you, if you want to have more information about log-free uh, log structures, you're welcome to look at their uh, lecture by Trevor Brown on SPTDC 2018, I think. He had, a good he had a good presentation that weighed one gigabyte, I think, in Microsoft PowerPoint. So, like, I don't encourage you to, to download it. Uh, there, the video is <laughs> wait, waits less. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so it seems that the funny fact is that probably you already addressed uh, like uh, all or most of the all like uh, questions from the chat. So because okay. we had a question about comparing to skip list and already have our answer probably in the same Vanya, congratulations. And the questions from Ivan Ponomarev. Uh, how many years we will need to wait until binary search trees becomes a default thread safe implementation of navigable sets or navigable map in Java? That's it. And I oh, just want okay. to remind to the audience that we have a QR code. And if you want mm. to ask some questions, please if you... follow the link. Oh, that's, that's a good question. Unfortunately, I have no idea how to answer it. I think by the time when everything happens, like A, B, tree will be on the market, or B, trees, or something like that, which is much better, like, which is, like, B, tree is not really better than binary search trees. There, you, should, you should make a lot of tricks to make it work faster, and possibly it is, it cannot be done in Java. But, uh, as you can see, this approach is still not very good in Java, in the sense, uh, for example, so we have, we have the, drawbacks of each approach. We have the first approach by concurrent binary search tree, um, the practical, by Bronson. They have the issue uh, that uh, it's, 
it's kind of hand over hand locking for the uh, for the uh, contain separations. So there is a drawback on that because contain separations are not not quite fast. The second tree, contention friendly binary search tree, it works very good on on the experiments when you take the whole lot on this data structure, like 64 threads, right? You know, like where, where one thread is devoted to the rebalancing. That's, that's kind of the problem because, for example, if you, 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 you would think, okay, I, I need to have one processor that is working on that while other processors are working on, on something else. You can do that. You need to have the second thread that restructure everything. So this is, their, this is not exactly their, um, the idea on what you want to do. With the internal binary search tree, it is, uh, there, is, there is a problem that uh, it, it has large overhead on the memory. I mean, it is better than binary search trees, but it's, it works even worse than Bronson tree. Oh, and about the descriptors, like don't think even about descriptors because the descriptors doesn't work. So if someone will implement the special memory management for the descriptors in Java, that would probably work at some point. But right now, right now I don't see any reasons uh, why, why binary search trees can, can be used in non-tailored applications. So in, in general, in general, it is, be, it is better to use skip list, I think, uh, because that's, that's everybody understands, and it is much easier for everybody to look at. I think, I think like that. So like, no, like, I guess this is their open problem kind of to create a, a practically good binary search tree. This is still the question in Java. I mean, in, in C++, you can do that. Like there, there are so many, so many implementations that are, that are working, but like with additional memory management. But in Java, like you have to, you have to do a large, a much bigger work on that to get there. Okay. Proper implementation. So that's very interesting things related to CAS N mm -hmm. and yeah. LLX S6 and the question is that I have some no ideas about algorithms based on case N uh, type of operations because of universal constructions and so all the things yeah. related to this. And uh, previously, I'm not an expert in concurrency, but I uh, have no ideas about some algorithms based on uh, load links, X or conditional X uh, primitives. Mm -hmm. And so it, if like we, the, the question is about the usage of such primitives, of long, 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 long load link X or conditional X in the various type of concurrency of, of modern concurrency. So is it like common use of such um, construction or not? So because CAS N and CAS is a like very, very like common, common primitive in uh, log free applications, correct? I mean, I think like in Java, this doesn't matter, I guess. For Java, it doesn't matter. For C++, I think LLX S6 is better than CAS. I mean, I mean you, you could, so like, I, a lot, so, a lot yeah. link in story conditional, it is much better primitive Absolutely. Than, than compare and swap. So that's, 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 that's why I ask you about this, because if you have this two, if you have LLCS, you have CAS. Yeah, that's yeah. how it works on AMD, for example. It, it, it works vice versa, also, to be honest. Ah, okay. you, you can you can implement. So they're equivalent, correct? Yeah, they're equivalent. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's a little it's a little bit more more useful, lot links story conditional, but like they're, they're you oh, you okay. can you can implement one so one from the theoretical from like the point, of view, point of view. This is yeah. the same. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming and go to the discussion zone right now. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vitaly.